Okay guys, before the daylight fades, I'm going to try to show you this. So, when you start getting down into this part of the Tin Tom, or I should call, I should, I should say the Tom Bigby. You're staying. You stay. It starts to get kind of windy and slow and very rural. My phone's not even working right now. There's no signal pretty much all day. But man, is it beautiful. It's just so it's just natural, untouched nature out here. I, I hope this is coming through. It's always a crapshoot when you try to convey it on film. It's very beautiful out here. Got about another, I don't even, less than an hour of sunlight, and I think we're gonna try run in the dark for a couple hours with my new light setup. If it works, we'll give it a shot. Okay guys, so I've seen enough of these today to make me think it's a thing. I've got these sportsmen with their boats and they park on the side of the river and they put their hunter orange over the motor and they're probably up there hunting this is probably federal land up there some more futile attempts to try to show you guys just how pretty it is out here it just this is like the sportsman paradise when I think about you know the good old boys in America that just love to hunt and fish and be out in the woods and I think of this type of territory this Alabama, Mississippi I mean Tennessee it's everywhere Minnesota, Michigan the old school sportsmen I kind of aspire to be to be that in a way. I mean, I know I never will, but you know, the old school sportsmen of the past that did all that stuff, you know, there's there's a purity to it. Just, you know, hunting for your food, fishing for your food, being out in the in God's creation, appreciating it and recognizing it that it was given to you to provide to you and your family it's really a beautiful thing I think it's slowly it's it's another one of those institutions in America that's getting lost it's a beautiful country here beavers. I bet he dives. <laughs> I love beavers. They just go about their business. They don't really care about anything but their own business. They're like, we're just doing our thing. Leave us alone. <laughs> he still hasn't do dove yet. Look at that. There he goes.
okay guys here's the plan so this anchorage right there is about five miles from us and it's getting dark as you can see and we're gonna go for it that's the anchorage we're gonna head towards it's gonna get dark before we get there but there might just be a little bit of light left we're gonna try out the the new positioned uh, floodlight Okay, here's a good thing. Watch this, guys. See that green buoy? All of a sudden, reflecting. That's what we're looking for. guys so we're getting pretty close pretty much just driving by instruments and the floodlight right we're going for that anchor symbol around the corner there and uh, luckily the cans have reflectors on them that's helping a lot Okay guys, that sailboat that passed us earlier today when we were on the beach, I think is anchored right here, so he's probably using Navionics also. And I'm going to try to go around him and up the creek, because he's probably drafting with a keel and I'm... We'll see how this goes. Looks like there's two sailboats actually. Looks like they moved their boats over to the side sometime last night. He said he drafts six feet. Good morning, guys and gals. Let me turn the phone around. I'll show you this spot that we pulled into last night in the dark. While we're making some breakfast here, this is the spot that we pulled into last night after dark. It's actually a really nice spot, nice and deep. About 10 feet right here. And there's the mouth where those two sailboats were blocking the entrance. Thanks guys. And we did clip the the loading dock, the loading ramp. I'll show you on the way out. But I only I don't think it did anything major. I saw it coming. I was watching the depth sounder and it was coming up really quick and so I Put it in neutral and start kicking up the motor and i just felt it kind of tap and there's another nick in the prop <laughs> there's a launch ramp that i clipped last night I was just chatting with my friend Melvin. 
Hi Melvin. And I just told him, oh, we were talking about the barges out here and I said, hey, there's one popping around the corner, let me call you back. Because as you can see, you would not want to ever find yourself being run over by one. It would be nightmarish. So we're just pulling off to the side. Plenty of depth. Let them pass. Okay, guys and gals, so we're coming up on the, there is a name for it, I will put it on the screen when I make this video. It's the Lock and Dam on the Tom Bigby here, that's near Gainesville, Alabama. And I just called him on the phone. Okay, I just had a really good conversation with the Lockmaster. <laughs> he said about 15 minutes, and uh, he even told me a great spot to anchor right on the other side of the Lock and Dam. Um, and there's even a dock there, so we're going to probably pull in there, find a good place to stop for the night, because it's about 4 o'clock. By the time we get through, it'll be getting dark, so... And I'll take Wavy for a nice long walk, and... Yeah, it was really nice of him, because I am looking ahead on Navionics here, and it does look like there's a long stretch that's kind of just narrow, and not a lot of places to get off the river, and, and uh, you know, staying out of, the, out of the way of the barges, so... Alright, so stay tuned, guys. Alright, we got the green light, guys. You see that right there? And they open up the gate for us. I've been finding this the best way, single-handedly, to lock through with the barge here. Is put some bumpers up in the front. I forgot to move the anchor inside but yeah piece of cake move the anchors I don't think I have to do that one this time but normally I just put everything inside the railing and piece of cake just turn sideways let them do their thing This is a fast lock. They drop you faster and they open the gates faster. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it and Happy New Year. Roger, Roger. Happy New Year. You're on the same trip. The lock master said right around this corner is a good spot. Let's go check it out. I'm already liking it. This looks like a good little beach for us to stop for the night. Good morning guys and gals. We are leaving the little side chute, which probably was the original Tom Bigby. There's all these oxbows where the waterway has straightened out all the curves on the Tin Tom. And plenty of depth in this one. This is the Lock and Dam. I'll put it on the screen which one it is, I forgot already, but they have names down here instead of just numbers. Would you get down? I don't know why you're up there. <clears throat> and so yeah, we are leaving this morning. Getting back on the trail. 
I'm starting to prioritize getting into warmer weather. We wake up in the morning, it's there's ice on the dish bucket and you know it's cold. Too cold. Not Michigan and winter cold, but it's feeling cold, so let's get to Mobile Bay. Hey guys, let me just take a second and show you something else we brought on board that's gonna be a game changer. This is a wood stove, a mini wood stove from a company in Minnesota called Northwoods Manufacturing. There's their emblem right there. I reached out to them and asked them if they would send me a stove uh, to, to use uh, in the shanty boat and show it to you guys. And they said, yeah, no problem. So they sent it to me and it was packed really good. Now we're in Florida right now. I'll show you this. This is the legs and stuff that go on the bottom. We're gonna be installing this this spring or summer when we get back. We don't really need it right now in Florida, obviously. <clears throat> I'm gonna install it right here. Now that we got the ice co, I don't need the apartment fridge anymore. That's gonna be our driftwood storage. <clears throat> we're gonna burn stuff we find along the way on our adventures. I'm gonna put the stove right here. I'm gonna make this into a little hearth and then we'll run the pipe out the side and up because I can't run it up here because I have solar panels on the roof so it's gonna be a perfect spot <clears throat> if you guys want to check them out I put a link below uh, my friend Wayne at Wayne's Diaries I will also link his channel below in the smaller channel shout out of the week which I do every episode and he installed his already in his school bus build and it's beautiful you can watch the fire through the window. That's al that's almost like a necessity for me. I want to be able to see the fire because I call uh, campfires and wood stove fires the original TV. <laughs> they basically stole that from us. They said, "Hey, let's get let's let's get them to stop watching the fire <laughs> and start watching television." <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole other pontifications of paradise someday. But yeah, guys, Northwoods Manufacturing, tiny wood stoves, way better deal than a lot of the other more known brands, which I won't mention here, um, and, and just as good or better build quality, and based in Minnesota. So, okay, guys, thanks for listening. Let's get back to the adventure. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, check this out. There is some deer, four of them swimming across the Tom Bigby here. Look at that. All right, so Wavy and I have a, a visitor on the on the river here, Daniel. He's got a really cool Boston Whaler that's, you wouldn't believe it, but it's a 1967, but it's been totally redone and just beautiful. You would think it's brand new. And he got a nice Suzuki 90 on the back, which is, I'm kind of convinced the Suzukis are like the best of the three now, because they, uh, look them up, they're doing timing chains now, so you don't even have to do tensioners and belts and, but yeah, just, uh, we were emailing back and forth, and and uh, I passed him already yesterday, and he came out on his boat for the day and saying hi. So, yeah, hi, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a beautiful day. Who wouldn't want to be out here? Yeah. He's tempted to just keep on going to Demopolis today. He said he'd just have his wife come pick him up. So. Yeah. Good, good seeing you and talking yeah. to you. All right. Good to meet you, yep. too. So I was just talking to Daniel there on the on the whaler, and he was telling me about the the sailboat, the two sailboats, the ones that were blocking the entrance. <laughs> well, he he met them, and he described. He told me there's just one guy. He's taken two sailboats lashed together, you know, and he's got a plan for that. And I thought there was two people. There's two, you know, they're traveling separate. But uh, that just goes to show you should try to meet people even if they block the entrance. <laughs> Don't hold a grudge. <laughs> I'm going to turn the phone around. They're coming up behind us right now. So, yeah, just one guy with two sailboats lashed together. 
that's a, I thought I was moving slow and having a challenging adventure, but that cannot be easy. Maybe we'll just sit here for a minute and talk to him when he goes by if he's got the time. Well, if he sees him. Yep. Pretty cool. We're gonna fall in behind him for a minute and he says he's on channel 14. Let's see if he'll answer. This is the Beagle Barge uh, falling in behind you, the double sailboat. Yeah, where'd you start from? On the St. Croix River, Hudson, Wisconsin. How about you? That was the Bay of Green Bay. Green Bay, Wisconsin, you say? Yeah, I was up in Menominee Marina between Marinette and Menominee, Michigan. Nice. And have you been uh, with the two sailboats lashed together like that, that, that far up? No, I picked this one up at the uh, Pickwick State Park Marina. Cool. I'm sure there's a story behind that. <laughs> I uh, was on the online auction and I put a dollar bid in on it and I didn't expect to get it and I wound up taking it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, you know, I... I saw you, you know, I've seen you for the past couple days here and I was just assuming there was two people. If I knew it was just you, I would have stopped and chatted more. Um, <clears throat> if it works out, do you want to try to find the same place to anchor out uh, tonight and we can chat some more? Yeah, I got a feeling we're going to be running into the dark. The only place that I see is uh, that snake, rattlesnake bend. Alright, I was just chatting with Daniel. He was the guy on the Boston Whaler. Um, and he told me about that spot too. I'll look into it more and, and I'll let you stay ahead of me. I move pretty slow anyways. And uh, you know, if it works out, we can, maybe we'll meet up some more. Yeah, I got some hamburger I need to cook up. We can make some burgers or something. That sounds good. If you drink beer, I got some uh, Two Hearted from uh, Bell's in Michigan. Yeah, sweet, I like that stuff. I just ran out of beer last night. Well, now we absolutely have to anchor out. You can't have that happening. <laughs> right, I hear you there. I did find one anchorage I could make before night, but it's right on the bend of a river and I'd have to be up against the bank. Yeah, drafting six foot is a challenge. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, I'll just stand behind you and uh, and we'll just we'll see how it goes. But I'm, I like moving slow anyway, so uh, out for now and we'll be in touch later. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm only moving about four and a half knots. Yeah, same here. We're coming into a beautiful part of the river here. These, these cliffs. I remember this five years ago. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to do the same, show the same stuff, but I'm re realizing why, you know, I honed in on some stuff and this would be one of them beautiful So I know when I originally did the Shanty Boat Beagle Adventure in 2018, I think it was, it was about five years ago. I only had, I think I started out with 300 subscribers, and by the time it was done, I might have had a thousand. So it was a completely different time on YouTube for me. And I hardly ever go back and watch that series, even though it does get discovered by quite a few people. Um, mostly just because there's not a lot of shanty boat stuff on YouTube. There is more now, of course, but back when I did that trip, there was very little. 
It was really just Wayne's Diaries. It used to be Wayne's World. He's still here, by the way, and link in description. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, just accidentally, really, you know, I was so inspired by the, the couple of people who did it before me that I went and did it and filmed it and had no idea what I was doing. And so I, I'm just remembering on this part of the trip stuff that I have long since forgotten. <laughs> and one of them is this little stretch of the river right here going through these bluffs near Epps, Alabama, which at the time I didn't even know it was Epps. I just, you know, most of the time I don't do any planning. I just kind of let it reveal itself as it comes, you know, but I'm just awestruck. I think it was raining a lot, really like torrential downpours that day because I remember, I think I vaguely remember making a video showing the, the rain on the water and it's not one of the best viewed episodes of that series, you know, probably for that reason it was kind of, you know, ethereal <laughs> that's the word but but yeah i it's, man i am today is totally beautiful i'm getting to see it in a totally different light it's an absolutely gorgeous day about 60 degrees and we're just slowly tooling down the tin tom here and remembering just how special and beautiful it is and how it's really easy to start looking ahead i i'm doing it myself where i'm like mobile bay florida and it's like the tin tom for loopers often just gets kind of looked over because uh, you're looking ahead and it's just human nature and I'm trying really really hard not to do that and just take it in because this is beautiful country this is sportsman's paradise um, a person would do well to settle in Mississippi and Alabama and this part of the world it's so natural and it's so beautiful and untouched and unspoiled I'm going to pop out of here and give you some aft footage. It doesn't last very long, but man, is it beautiful. And look at these bridges going over it, which just add to its the scenic quality of it. Here's Daniel <laughs> on the whaler coming in. You sure don't look like you're very sick. <laughs> he says he's kind of under the weather, but he's having fun anyways. Now, Daniel, you don't look very sick to me. <laughs> this, this would be the best cure for anything, so. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think of? I love it. It's a, look at the train going across. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. We got a train going across, guys. See if I can own it a little bit. I got a new phone and it doesn't have quite as good a camera as my old one does. Rest in peace. Dropped it. A phone is a risky business for the life of a YouTuber. It's pretty hard, especially when you're doing stuff like this, but We just got a whole bunch of good information about this part of the world from Daniel, guys. This is such a blessing. Have a good one. guys I'm gonna take a moment and show you some rare footage so we're going about seven and a half miles an hour as you can see right down there in the corner I'm probably doing 4200 rpms not quite wide open throttle but pretty close I never do this Once in a while, I'll open her up just to see what happens. This is supposedly one way to cure the make an oil problem. Is you raise the temperature of the motor for a while, and it'll burn off all the condensation that builds up in the crankcase. So we'll see. It really is 
pointless in a way to just gain a couple miles per hour and burn probably twice as much fuel so I don't do it very often for that reason but I figured I'd open her up just because why not just see what happens Daylight fading. We're about 20 miles from Demopolis. And around that corner there is something called Rattlesnake Bend. I think the sailboat fella, his name is Dennis, if I'm not mistaken, with the two sailboats. Pulled up in the first channel there to anchor. And if we see him, we're going to go join him. This would be the mouth of the Black Warrior River, where it runs into the Tom Bigby, just above Demopolis. And you can probably see on Navionics there also. This would be the entrance to the marina in Demopolis here. We don't go to marinas normally. We are going to go down here to a public dock where there's a Walmart just a couple miles away and get our gas and hang out for a while and probably see Demopolis. Let people love you. <laughs> <laughs>